welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another Flash. more more of a content update. So let's get the content update piece out of the way. We'll go into that separately. First things first. So I think I mentioned in my last video. I was thinking about reviewing um, the Real Housewives of Dubai, and I'm going to be fully transparent. I haven't watched it yet, and I kind of have interest in it. Um, I don't know. I guess, I and I was on the fence of it before, and let me explain why. It has nothing to do with the location. Um, it kind of does have to do with the first season, because I did watch the first season of it, and I didn't really love it. Um, I actually liked the reboot of Real Housewives in New York more, which isn't saying much, because that was kind of a lackluster first start, but I saw potential. Um, with Dubai, I do see it too, but... I don't know. And also, it's not just that for me, to be honest. The main thing is I really am trying to focus more on my health and wellness and getting that together. So I do want to take the opportunity of taking a break from doing as much YouTube content. Um, for those who don't know, I mean, I'm not a channel. Clearly, I'm not a channel that's monetized. Um, and that's not the purpose. Let's be perfectly clear. This was a creative outlet that I was talking to my therapist about that I was missing. Um, I've always been someone who's been on the creative side. I've always been a creative person. Growing up, I used to like draw things. I used to be in the choir. Um, I've auditioned for a record deal before. Like <laughs> I was a model for a spell. Like I was always into like that kind of bag of entertainment and stuff like that. That's always something that has been on my mind one way or the other. But the other side of me that's been pretty much kind of obvious is I've always been someone who likes sports too. Um, I'm not the most coordinated when it comes to sports has more than one variable, i.e. a ball. <laughs> but cycling, which is more than one variable, but it's kind of the exception to the rule. And like running, those are the things that I've been very, very good at. And then I'm also someone who's very much into strength training and um, that kind of, and yoga, clearly. Um, so I'm trying to focus a little bit more on those things, minus the yoga piece, because I'm also adding swimming into the mix because I am doing a triathlon in July. Um, so I'm trying to focus on that. But because I did have an injury back in April, I know I have a lot more work to do. And in order for me to get where I want to be at come October, I really need to go full throttle on the training, lay back on the, on the going out part of things. Um, and the hair won't be hairing as much this year as far as like different looks and whatnot because I'm going to be in the water more. I'm going to be working out. So I, I, I'll i be honest. I've, I, I've even thought about like cutting my hair short again because when my hair was short, I meant business. I didn't care about this. It was very much, I got to it. <laughs> um, and it was actually my fastest when my hair was short. I was, because I wasn't focusing on like, you know, the aesthetic of it all, even though I do enjoy that aspect of like, looking good and whatnot um it is kind of a distraction <laughs> i'll be honest for me it is not for i don't know if it's for others but for me personally it is and also you may have noticed look i have nails um so a lot a lot has been going well for me as far as like good stuff but that's one of the things content wise i'm gonna um pro so you won't get you you're not gonna get the real housewives dubai but um the real housewives of Orange County is coming back, and that season looks good. <laughs> I am invested, and I want to know what happens with um, with Shan Bador. Uh, I think that's how you say her name. Pretty sure that is. I want to see what happens with all that since she got that, D that DUI. I want to see what everything that happens with that. I think um, the Real Housewives of Orange County, which is the first Real Housewives of Real Housewives is like the, you know, the flagship show, the one that started it all. Um, I, I see it's going back on the upswing of things. I also saw Sudden from Real Housewives of um, Beverly Hills um, made an appearance in the trailer because I just saw that trailer today. And I'm, I'm, I'm in. And that's the other reason why I think for Dubai, 
I'm not as interested because even the even the trailer did not catch my eye. Um, and that's kind of not really a good sign. And honestly, I want to focus on having a decent summer, getting my training back in order, and going from there. And also, um, this is probably... Uh, I'll get more into like the personal, like how I've been doing in the Get Fit With Me series business accountability. But just know I'm doing very, very well. Um, and I'm, I'm probably in the best mental state I've been in in a while. But now it's time for me to get back to the physical state that I was in before. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, it's a process. It's all a process. Shout out, to my, shout out to my one friend who says that to me all the time. And he's not even, he's not even lying. It's a process. And... Um, I'm motivated now. I'm a lot more motivated when it comes to this process. I've been motivated the past couple weeks. Um, really, I had a race to help things out, and I've been kind of just wanting to, I've been keeping the ball rolling from there. So, anyway, that is a content update. I'm going to do that. I am thinking, but I think I'm only going to do one one show because um, I want, a part, a part of me wants to do um, the College Hill Season 3 Celebrity Edition, because I am, I think I might watch that show, but I kind of don't think I'm going to watch that show. Like, for me, I'll be fully honest, um, even as someone who does YouTube um, as a passion project, I watch a lot of YouTube. Like, I don't really like to watch regular TV so much. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention I know the other thing I am going to cover, and I mentioned it before, but I am going to cover the Summer Olympics when it comes to track and field. I'm going to cover that because that is a passion of mine. I've always kind of wanted to give a play-by-play -play on how all that is, and it's kind of my thing, clearly. Um, Mel Nostalgic Runner, hello, it's the name of the channel, right? Right. So I am going to be doing, I am going to um, have some coverage on that. I'm going to definitely talk through that because... That is going to be the other thing that I watch. I always watch the Olympics when it's on. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, that is a thing of mine. So, um, I will probably start the coverage of discussing that during the U.S. Olympic trials, um, which I think is in a couple weeks. So, we'll go into that. Um, we'll talk about who's the favorites, like what countries are the favorites. And for those who don't know, I actually cover, I actually watch track and field. Like, I watch indoor track, outdoor track. I watch all of it. The only thing I don't watch really nearly m as much of is college. Um, but, yeah, I watch most of it. <laughs> so, um, even though clearly I'm from the United States, my I'm going to be rooting for mostly U.S., you know, um, athletes. There are other athletes that I'm very aware of that I'm going to be rooting for as well. Like... Um, because there's going to be, clearly it's going to be some track and field events that the United States are not the favorite. Um, it hasn't been like that for the world championships, but I think for the Olympic years, it usually is that. Like, you know, for short distance, it's always typically the U.S. versus the Jamaicans. And then for mid-distance, it's a little bit more of a mixed bag, depending on if you're talking about the female athletes or, women, or men athletes or um, male athletes. It really just depends on that. Or your non non berries because we do have um, one non berry who I'm rooting for, um, and why well, say non berry non binary? You know, happy pride, guys! Happy pride. Kind of why I'm also wearing pink, but anyway. Um, and I don't know if they're the favorite to win because they one of the major favorite one of the major u.s athletes kind of came back recently but we'll get more into that when we're really really digging deep into those different events because there's going to be a lot of videos discussing all that because there's so many different events um now the u.s marathon i'm not going to be covering that the trials i won't be covering that because the trials already happened when it came to the u.s marathon so we already know who's doing that um now the during the Olympics, I'll cover it. But everything else, clearly, the trials are a different time um, or in the, in the next couple weeks. So I'm going to cover that as well. Um, 
Also, hopefully my running kind of lines better with that too. But anyway, that really me covering the Olympics and the Olympic trials. Um, yeah, the politics of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. Never have been. But seeing extraordinary athletes do their thing, I'm going to always root for that. And people Okay, so side note. And I don't know where I'm going to put this in when it comes to the content update. <laughs> I do have a little bit of a story time. Not really story time. It's not much of anything, but um, so, okay. For those who watch my Martha's Vineyards, um, my summer house, Martha's Vineyard, um, like videos. Y'all all knew I was crushing on Nick. <laughs> okay. It was such a non-secret. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I found that man so attractive. Find him so attractive. It's like his positive energy exudes off the screen. For me, it does. For me. And side note, I was one of the few that actually liked him first season, okay? He was kind of getting a little weird at the beginning, but I was getting to know him, and I was a, I was a Nick apologist first season. I was like, wait, maybe he just is flirty, because I'm flirty. Okay, maybe it was a pot call to kill me. I don't know. But my whole thing was, you know, and it's everyone's first time on TV. But I've always had a soft spot for Nick. I did not review the show first season, but that's how it was first season. Like, Quise is kept. I, I liked him from the beginning. Like, he was one of my favorite people on the show. Him and Preston were like my two favorites. Um, Preston, I don't know if he is this season. I'm kind of... For those who saw my reunion, y'all know my opinion on everything. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about it, though. The show's going on pause, and I'm not happy about it. I wanted to talk about it a little bit, but I didn't want to make a separate video about it, so I'm adding it to the content update. And I'm not happy that it's going on pause. It's not just because of the Nick situation. It was really, it's not because of my crush on Nick. It's really because I really like watching the show. It was a very good positive show that was on Bravo. It's one of the few positive <laughs> shows that was on Bravo. The drama was light. It was never anything so serious. And it was black, like, you know, not really black excellence per se, but like positive black people, different types of black people, non-monolithic. Like, it was just everything to me. Like, I am relatable. Very relatable. Um, some of them were younger versions of me, I could see. I was like, okay, some of y'all are younger versions of me. <laughs> and some of them are like, okay, we, we see each other. And others, I'm like, okay, you guys can be my friends. And some of them, I was like, yo, I don't know if I can hang out with you based off how you act on the show. <laughs> but it was a combination of all those things, right? Right. So... I'm very sad that this is on pause. I want to know what y'all think what that means. Because Bravo's been putting a lot of shows on pause lately. I mean a lot. It's not just this show. And do you think there's something going on with Bravo where the money's funny? Because I know NBC Universal's one giant group, but, you know, Bravo's like a subsidiary, a smaller, you know, I don't know how much money they put into Bravo versus like the other like parts of Universal. So I'm just wondering, I don't know if it has to do with all the things that are going on with Andy Cohen or what, but it's kind of just to me, I don't understand it. And I guess I didn't really care as much when it comes to some of the other shows, to be honest. Um, because I think it's called Family Karma or something like that. I've heard that that show's really cool to watch, and maybe I'll go back and watch it. That I know that show's been put on pause. Van Vanderpump Rules, that's also got put on pause. And Vanderpump Rules, I didn't really care about that because I don't watch that show. But see, I guess for me, bias wise, half the shows have been put on pause. I don't watch them. But um, even like. They're talking about a cash shakeup with Real Housewives of Miami. And I'm just like, why? <laughs> why? 
why are we why are we breaking that? That's not broken. And then even with the Real Housewives of Atlanta, that's not projected to come back until 2025. I'm like, but they started filming now. Why are we what's the delay on that? And so like when it comes even when it comes to me trying to find more content to review, there's not much out there. Like right now, the only housewife show that the only two housewife shows that are on air right now is Real Housewives of New Jersey, which y'all know I wasn't gonna review that. Um, I mentioned that a while ago. That's low vibrational for me. I can't, I can't. I already had a tough enough time with the Real Housewives of Potomac, but I I review that because that's a black show. Um but I had a tough time even with that. I wanted to quit reviewing that a couple times last season while I was reviewing it. And Real Housewives of um, Atlanta, I think that was before I started reviewing. So, you know, that was before I started reviewing um, The Housewives. So I watched the full season, but I haven't, I didn't review it because I, I didn't, wasn't reviewing shows yet like that. So I don't know. It, and also, too, I haven't heard any word about the Real Housewives of New York coming back when that's coming back. I just have a lot of questions. I'm slightly worried about it. And I'm kind of afraid that real, um, Summer House Martha's Vineyard is, is like pause means canceled. And I really hope that's not what it is. I hope it's just a cash shakeup. And I hopefully, when it comes to the shakeup, they don't overly shake it up. You know, that's kind of the other, pardon me. All of a sudden, I just got burpy. But, like, that's kind of the other reason why when I watch these shows and I give my feedback of the review of, like, who I want back and who I don't want back. Because I know that the network's probably watching, you know, a lot of us who review these shows. And I want to make it clear, you know, I'm not trying to, don't get it twisted. I want everyone to have a job. But I know not everyone can stay. And I know at the end of the day, they need to keep the show fresh and keep it shaken up. So I really like someone on the show. I'm going to say it like <laughs> because I don't want you to get rid of them. Or if you do, find the, find them something else to do on the network. Like that is always I don't want someone to be out of work. You know, that's not ever the intent. So, um, yeah. But I guess I say all that to say is what do you guys think they could do to make um, Summer House Martha's Vineyard like better? Um, I do blame Bravo a little bit on not promoting it. Well, not a little bit, a lot of it. They did not promote the show. They did not promote season two. And I think the reason why they got a reunion is because we all complained about it enough for them to get one. And they did that to make us happy. They, it was very clear when I reviewed the reunion and when we watched the, the, the reunion together, they weren't going to do that. I mean, it was pretty clear. Um, but... The way they came together, made sure they all looked good, because they did. And I guess the other thing I should have mentioned when I was looking at, when I was um, reviewing the reunion looks, the um, Watch What Happens Live um, set and lighting, it's not good for, it's not good. <laughs> so, um, and the reason why I know that is, we're tying this together here. So a lot of the cast members have been doing um, interviews lately. So I watched Noelle's re uh, interview with Kim Pyre. I learned a lot more of why she was so mad at Summer. And um, I kind of want to know how that develops. So that's another loose end. I would love to see what happens with that. And the interview for me just isn't enough. And also, too, the other person who was interviewed and actually described a certain cast member's fashions was Nick. Nick was interviewed by the Brooke Ashley. And shout out to both Kim Pyre and the Brooke Ashley. I did shout out the Brooke Ashley <laughs> at the reunion while I was, while I was reviewing the reunion because I knew that last question to Shanice was from her. <laughs> Because if you watch your con if you watch your content, you already knew it was her. Uh, they said Brooke from New York. I was like the Brooke Ashley from New York. 
Um, and I watched them too, especially because I know they're also covering the show a lot. And they got to meet some of the cast members more than once because they went to the premiere party. So that's the other reason why I was like, okay, let's see if I find anything else new. And one thing that I did find out new, and for those who haven't gotten a chance to check out their interviews, I'll put the link in the description. Definitely check out their interviews because the, inter the interviews were chef's kiss. Um, especially Nick is just, I fell in love with Nick even more after this interview. He is very, very friendly, very, very impressionable. And um, he, he is. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm trying to hide why I say that. Because <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so definitely check out the interview, though. It was a very good listen. And the other thing I would say about that interview that was really, really cool was that he described Alex, because I said Alex was the best dress for me. I thought he was the best dress. But because the lighting for Watch What Happens Live is just not the best, we did not see that his outfit was kind of shimmering a little bit. He had like a little bit of like a shimmering material. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> and I, I went back to try to watch, um, watch What Happens Live, like their reunion to see if I could see it. And I still couldn't see it. So... There's that. But you also get to know more of Nick's history. Um, you also get to learn how much running he really does. That man runs. <laughs> and hello, this channel's called Mel Nostalgic Runner. You know I love that. <laughs> Y'all already know I love that, right? So and one of the things he said that kind of stuck with me at the end was he's doing, um, he's doing all the majors again. A lot of them. So he's doing Berlin. Um, he's doing, he's debating whether he's going to do New York or not. Because I mean, I, I'm assuming he's part of the New York Chicago, uh, sorry, the New York Roadrunners Club. So he probably can just get in. Um, and also too, I think he runs fast enough for he may qualify. I don't know. Um, I know he's done Boston before. Um, he's doing Chicago this year. And I'm just like, oh, what are you doing Chicago? <laughs> and part of me wants to ask, and I might, I might ask him, um, uh, if, you know, he's running or like, you know, running before that and stuff. Cause I mean, I have a running group that we do a shakeout run. So Nick, you're more than welcome to join my running group who does a shakeout run the day before the marathon. Um, I won't be there, but I do have a running group. <laughs> I will say that. Um, and because um, unfortunately this year, the Chicago Marathon and my 50K are the same weekend. So I'll be doing the 50K the day that people are doing a shakeout run for the Chicago Marathon. But I will be in the area for the Chicago Marathon. I actually be handing out Malort shots. So if you want to do a Malort shot, which I don't think you do, I think you probably just want to get it done. <laughs> hey, but also too, the other thing I found out in the interview, he's living in Chicago. Didn't know that. I was like, okay, interesting. But so it was a good interview overall. And he basically said, hey, he's very nice, very impressionable. If you want to follow him on social media, you can. So I, right away, when I saw that, I followed him on Instagram. I was like, okay, I'm going to follow him. And um, so, and he posts a lot on his Instagram. And yesterday was Global Running Day, for those who don't know. And what Global Running Day is, for those who don't run, is, and you don't have to run, like, you can run a mile, and you're part of the Global Running Day. So I ended up running four miles yesterday, and it was... <laughs> It wasn't the run I wanted because my watch was just acting a fool. Like I kept like resetting my watch. <laughs> I couldn't get my time together. So I was kind of annoyed. But I did run during Glo um, Global Running Day. And he, you know, put in his like story, his Instagram story, who ran Global Running Day. I was like, I did. And I was like, I did. I ran four miles. And like, just like a response thing. And... <laughs> He replied back. He was like, good job. I was like, <laughs> why this morning? I was like ecstatic. I was like, Nick replied back. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. I just did a smile.
smiley face and then he left it. I was like, You would think it'll be the first time I've ever gotten like DM by like a Uber pop, like not really a celebrity influencer. I've been, <laughs> I have been DM'd by an influencer before, but I act like, I don't know why I act like for the first time that's ever happened to me. <laughs> but for those who know, you know why, because I have a crush on him. <laughs> So I just had to share that little tidbit at the end because I don't know. And look, I am, bl man, child, I'm blushing. <laughs> I just want to like hide me. <laughs> but anyway, I just, so I just wanted to say I've talked to Nick. <laughs> it wasn't serious, but I, I, you know, I'm just kidding though. But so he really is nice. Um, cause that was nice that he even like, you know, acknowledged that I like said that. I was like, oh, <laughs> and he just DM'd me. I was like, okay, okay. And I was like, thank you. And I all, and I wasn't expecting response back from me saying thank you, but immediately he put a heart emoji. I was like, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, some people really are the way they are on TV. I guess that's the other that's the other takeaway I have from that. He seems like a nice person, and so that was cool. And I don't again, I don't know why I'm cheesing so badly because I've met professional athletes before. I've met <laughs> like this is not my first rodeo. I promise you it's not. I mean, I live in a major city, so it really is not my first rodeo. And I have friends who are in the industry. But <laughs> The way I acted like I was five years old. <laughs> I'm still doing it right now. But anyway, so that was a little bit of kind of a little bit of extra when it comes to the content update situation. I do seriously want to know your thoughts and how you feel about this pause um, and what's going on Bravo just as a whole, not necessarily just Martha's Vineyard. You know, that is the program I care the most about when it comes to the pause, but it's happening a lot. The content and like what they got out there at Bravo, just even how things were, were. So when you go to how things were in the fall, there was so much content. It was too much. Like I was reviewing, I went from reviewing like four shows. I, I think I was re reviewing almost four shows at the same time to now there's like maybe two tops and they're like not really... For me, I'm not going to review either of them right now. I'm waiting for Real Housewives of OC to come back, and then I'll review that. And then the Summer Olympics. And maybe that's what it is, because NBC Universal is part of Bravo. They're maybe putting a pause on the content until after the Olympics, and then they're going to get back to it. That's the only thing I can think of is happening right now. Um, because that is going to affect their ratings and they don't want, and they probably don't want anything to compete with the Olympics. Um, because even the timing of when the Real Housewives of OC comes on, it is a little bit, I, it's kind of around the Olympics, but it's kind of not. So maybe that's what it is. Um, I literally just thought of it just now, but anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. Uh, we don't need talking more about this, but let me know what your thoughts are. Um, it's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And side note, this is going to be the last time you see this. I'm taking it down tonight because uh, triathlon season starts. Anyway, I will see you next time. Bye.